Do you know what? It's Wednesday and it's Amazonet's Raw Daily. And today we have a couple of topics. Two topics are actually from Monday, which I forgot to talk about yesterday and Monday, I think, or Friday last week. I'm not sure. I I said that in the next episode, we will talk about some psychological effects and then we didn't. So I would want to do that today. But I would like to start with updates from the Amazonets API. And today's update is um, two-folded. There is an omni-channel metric fee, which launches for US consumer package good advertisers. So there is a so-called omni-channel metric available since a while, which you can use in the DSP to measure on and off Amazon effectiveness and kind of uh, see holistic shopping activities across retail outlets. And this omnichannel metric has now a fee and the fee is 4% of the media spent. The 4% will be applied to the supply cost in Amazon DSP and only applied to impressions where OCM is enabled. So this is interesting for everyone who is using that. And the other update is on bug sheets and they are now available in Chinese and Japanese language. Bug sheet downloads are not now available in these two languages. If you have one of the selected as the language in your advertiser profile, you can download a bug sheet file in the selected language. All headers, errors, errors message and other text will be translated. Some texts, such as campaign and ad group names, will remain unchanged. That doesn't make sense because that's the that's the unique name, the unique string, and you don't want to translate that. Um, and for bulk sheet uploads, you can use Chinese, Japanese, or English, regardless of the language selected in your profile. So um, that's interesting. I think uh, that might help people located in Japan or Chinese, uh, China, um, with their preferred language to upload bulk sheets. Um, but I think if you download this bulk sheet in English, you will not kind of change it and then upload the whole thing in, in Chinese. Uh, that doesn't make too much sense to me. So uh, it's only interesting for those who have also their selected language in the advertiser profile to be Chinese. Um, because then you can then you don't have to switch between the languages all right um that's the two updates from the amazon api slash um, advanced tools center and now let's talk a little bit about some more psychological marketing effects and how they could eventually work in tandem with your amazon strategies and your tactics and I want to talk about the confirmation bias, the priming effect, and the cognitive load effect. They are all information-based psychological effects happening in human brains. The first one, the confirmation bias, is something people look for evidence that confirms what they think. And this is a, a very strong effect because... Um, in science, that's what I learned in my studies, you're actually going to prove a point by doing the opposite. So you're, if you have a certain opinion on something, then you try to prove the opposite uh, in order to validate your, your, your points. So you're not looking for confirmation on your points. You're looking for um, the opposite of the confirmation, which does make sense because it's very easy if you have an opinion to kind of find eventually the things which just confirm uh, what you're thinking. And it's kind of, um, yeah, it just basically then tells you, hey, uh, you, you have been absolutely right the whole time. And maybe that's not the truth because you've been just looking for the things which would confirm your opinion anyways. So... Um, the confirmation bias definition is people tend to search for, interpret, prefer, and recall information in a way that reinforces their personal beliefs or hypothesis. And that's very that's very important when it comes to testing. And um, we do lots of testing on Amazon. And one thing I'm always saying is 
first of all, you need a strong hypothesis. If you do something, you need to say, okay, what do I think will happen if I do that? What is my hypothesis? If I change X, what will happen on my conversion rate, on my click-through rate, on my impression, impression share, whatever? This is your hypothesis. And now you're trying to, to confirm that or disprove it, basically. Um, all right, that's the confirmation bias. Um, so think about that, look out for that. And I think we all have been um uh, uh, uh i'm not a, I, I don't find the right english word for that but i think we we, we have all been in the in uh, in a place where a confirmation bias was happening to us as well the next thing is priming which is something also very important when it comes to marketing and it says that subtle visual or verbal suggestions help users recall specific informations and influencing how they respond. Priming works by activating an association or representation in users' short-term memory just before another stimulus or task is introduced. And it's basically kind of um, telling a customer, a user, or whatever, something in advance and giving them kind of a prime. So um, on a D2C shop, for example, uh, when somebody enters your website, you can say, on this shop, you will find ridiculously cheap prices. And then if the person goes on the product detail page and sees the, the cheap and sees cheap prices or prices which are um, observed as cheap or recognized as cheap, the priming did also an effect on that. If you would prime, hey, um, shop super fast and the process is really fast, then the priming will help to reinforce that learning and to give the person kind of the feeling afterwards, oh, this was really fast. So priming is something you'll give to somebody and then with their next kind of interactions, they will kind of connect these uh, things um and then uh hopefully uh, uh it's it's better connected than in their brain and then they kind of get the point you're priming them on all right um and there's lots of good examples on priming that's basically happening uh everywhere in the marketing world and the third thing I want to talk about with you is cognitive load, which is also an information psychological effect. It's the total amount of mental effort that is required to complete a task. And um, you can think of this as a, uh, as a certain amount of loadage of, uh, how, how do you say, um, <clears throat> as a certain amount of capacity your brain has to think through things and the more you have to think about it the bigger your load gets and at some point you're not able to process this load so cognitive load is about making it easy for the people to not overextend this load to have this load very small so it's easier for people to make decisions for example or to move move ahead the the definition goes as cognitive load is the total amount of mental effort that is required to complete a task. You can think of it as a processing power needed by the user to interact with a product. If the information that needs to be processed exceeds the user's ability to handle it, the cognitive load is too high. And you can think of that as a paralysis or some kind of blocker inside the head of the person to actually process the information in a way that it's meaningful for them and that it drives the desired action you want. So what you would want to do instead, present information in an easy, digestible way and eventually offer a solution which lets people who are interested in learning more to learn more and deep dive into specific information pieces. So what you could do on a product detail page, and I'm not talking about Amazon here specifically because there it's uh, uh, lots of things are already 
scripted how you can do them. Um, maybe in the A plus content, you can work with these effects, but um, what you would want to do in general, for example, if you want to sell a product, make the key information pieces available, make them short, rememberable, and, and kind of easy to understand and put everything which is additional information, which is interesting, maybe even uh, 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 for, for some parts necessary to understand into a different section of the product detail page, the product description, have, have a section which is kind of the summary talking about the three, four or five main benefits. And then have a section which says, uh, you want to know more about benefits and then it opens up and you get more information on additional benefits or uh, a deep dive on the individual benefits even more. So in that way, people have an easy entry and they can extend their stay and their information inflow if they want to and if they have the time to and if they have the capacity, the mental capacity to do so. So think about cognitive load as a person's capability to trans to uh, um, process information in their head and don't make it too hard for them because everyone has a different cognitive load possibility or uh, capacity and depending on not only one person's personality and uh, uh, you know these kind of things but also depending on did I had already a long day was I in meetings the whole day and now I just want to shop something do I need uh, you know it's lots of variables which would influence the cognitive load possibilities for a human and therefore think about that and make information easy digestible and with that i think we can call it a day have a wonderful one have a wonderful wednesday thank you very much as always for listening see you tomorrow stay curious bye bye